Sivezi kiniso, sivusele la utembega. Program, but next we'll be having TikTok for journalists, a new tool for audiences engagement and fighting mis and disinformation. Uh, we obviously have speakers that are going to be presenting to us. That is Flourish uh, Chukwurwa, who is a West African correspondent from the Deutsche Welle News in Lagos, as well as Marcus Bush, uh, independent TikTok researcher and consultant with Deutsche Welle Academy. And that'll be followed by a clubhouse, a more human place on the internet a presentation by Tutelene Asino, Associate Professor at Oklahoma State University, and that'll bring day one to an end. Uh, but to just give you a little bit of an insight into who we will be calling up next, we have uh, Ms. Flourish, uh, who is obviously a journalist with interest in politics, health, women, and children. Uh, and what, 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 what stuck out for me is how she enjoys innovative storytelling uh, through using techniques like VR360 videos. Uh, so I'm really keen to hear what she uh, will bring to the next discussion as well as Marcos Bush, who is an independent TikTok a researcher and consultant uh, with the Deutsche Welle Academy. Um, he explores how emerging technologies can best be used for telling stories and transferring knowledge. And he has worked as a public broadcasting journalist as well with more than 10 years experience. Uh, so that is what we can expect uh, in the next hour or so as these guys get us into the detail of the changing landscape. Uh, this is what we call new media. Uh, over to Flourish and Marcus for the next presentation. Thank you very much, Patrick. And Hi, I'm Marcus, but over to Flourish. Hey, Flourish, good morning, how are you? Hi, good morning. How are you doing this morning, Marcus? I'm doing fine, really excited. I love the DJ set and just had to look up how old this Macarena dance is until <laughs> I found a TikTok video from 2019. So actually the trend was recycled. Um, Ooh. <laughs> that, so um, yeah, how should we do it? Should I just kick off Flourish and then you take over? Yes, yes. Okay, fantastic. Then, hey, um, hello conference. If you have any remarks whatsoever, please just uh, throw stuff into the chat. We're happy to discuss. Um, so I will be sharing some slides. And of course you will see some uh, decent TikToks in the coming hour. Okay, so you should see now a slide with our title called TikTok for journalists a new tool for audience engagement and fighting myths and disinformation. And I will shortly introduce myself, uh, even though Patrick has done an amazing job doing that. Um, so what have I done concerning TikTok? I have been working as a TikTok researcher for the Mozilla Foundation, and I've just published um, two reports on TikTok. Um, especially tackling disinformation right um, before and during the German election. Okay, so I think I can talk about that a little. And besides that, I have a newsletter on TikTok. It's called Understanding TikTok. It's a weekly newsletter, it's free, and it just got um, featured on Substack, and I'm pretty proud about that. It's a featured publication 2021. So if they like it, it should be of some value, okay? So just to get a general idea concerning you as an audience, um, is there anyone out there who's an avid TikTok user? Your time has come now. Please come forward and write into the chat. You can, of course, if you like, share your TikTok handle. So you will get some new followers probably. And if you are not on TikTok, we're totally happy to get questions from you. And you can just um, throw them into the chat and we'll come to that later, okay? What I will be doing in the coming minutes before handing over to Flourish is I wanna give you a very quick and general intro to TikTok and talk a little bit um, about how it can be used in the context of doing journalism all right all right 
So currently, when you think about TikTok, many, many people think about um, TikTok is used for fun. It's used for dancing. You might be familiar with some of these faces on this slide. For instance, Cubby Lame, the number one gentleman on TikTok these days, an unemployed factory worker coming from Senegal, living in Italy. He has now become the most followed male on TikTok. On the left side, you see Charlie D'Amelio, a US teenager who is number one. And together with Bella Porch, they are representing the dancing and fun part on TikTok, okay? But TikTok actually is so much more. There are more and more politicians um, flocking to the platform all over the planet. Um, there are many NGOs, etc., and I'm happy to share with you um, an Excel sheet, an open Excel sheet with roughly 450 nonprofits and digital diplomacy accounts, okay, if you just want to dive into it. But let me first, um, before anything else, just answer the question, why should you care? Why are we speaking about TikTok? And maybe this chart helps you and helps us to understand why. TikTok is just growing. It's growing and growing and go growing all over the planet and it's growing pretty fast, as you can see. So it took TikTok only um, three and a half years to grow one billion users on the planet. And of course, Instagram has a lot of um, users as well, but it took Instagram way longer to grow, okay? And not only that, there are not only a lot of people on that platform, actually there are some observers, I picked out this guy, YouTube star Casey Neistat, who are already arguing that TikTok poses an existential risk to YouTube and even to Netflix. Casey Neistat, pretty famous YouTuber, at least in the US, he said, you know what? I spend you know, more time on TikTok than on YouTube and I'm Netflix combined. Um, all right. And actually the numbers well, we stay the same. Someone's out there of you guys is not muted. So we are part of a telephone conversation, I guess. Be aware, just so you know. Um, so another slide with another chart, all right? So what you can see here, that at least in the UK, TikTok is way ahead of YouTube when it comes to the average monthly hours per user, okay? And speaking of relevance, TikTok was the most downloaded app globally. Let's add non-gaming app. Um, in 2020 and most parts of 2021 as well. So that should tell you something about the relevance. Currently, the app is more like Generation Z focused. So people under 25 are the majority on the platform, but this might not be the case forever. As you can see with Facebook and Instagram, they started pretty young, Facebook only for college students and now very late adopters um, are flocking, are still flocking to, to Facebook, okay? What else? As we said before, a lot of time is spent on the platform. This is a conference on the future of journalism. So um, let's talk about journalism for a bit. Um, there is a pretty new Pew uh, study, and I'm posting that to the chat as well. Um, and I'm just explaining that for a bit. As you can see, um, this one's foking, focusing on each social media site user who regularly get news there. And as you can see, TikTok is not on top. Twitter and Facebook are on top. But if you um, compare the little colored um, thingies, the chart bars, you see that TikTok has been growing, growing from 2020 to 21, okay? Um, and the others, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, they 
have been losing. So you might just see a trend there bubbling up more and more people on TikTok and the relevance for news organizations and news consumptions on the platform growing as well. Okay. So um, before I hand over to Flourish, let me just very quickly tell you a little bit what you can expect on the platform concerning journalism. Okay. And I will present to you one, two, three, four, five different things that you can see on the platform that journalists do on the platform using TikTok. Okay. One thing is you will find new formats of telling stories, of doing journalism on the platform. And I want to share with you an uh, example. And this example is, um, has been done by Planet Money. That's a national public radio podcast on yeah, economic topics. And I will present to you one TikTok video that's tackling the topic of artificial meat, okay? So why is artificial meat more expensive than real meat, okay? So please give ourselves a minute and um, we're gonna check out this TikTok video, okay? Order. Oh, Let me just, wow, 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 that's a bit. Small, I guess. Welcome to Decent Burger, Homer. The Decent Burger, can I take your order? Oh, ah. shoot, there's a rat back here. Yeah, I'll take one Decent Burger, please. All right, dude, you're looking at 376. Oh, the rat done fell in the fryer. And I'll take the impossible Decent Burger. Thank you. And yours would be $5, my dude. Well, wait a second. Why is my burger more expensive than his? Oh, shoot, Maybe the rat's alive. Maybe because it's impossible to make. Oh, it's a little crispy, but it's alive. His burger is made out of meat. It should be more expensive. Well, everybody eats meat, dude. Nobody wants to eat a burger that's impossible to eat. They don't call it the impossible burger because it's impossible to eat. It's because it's plant-based. Oh, so like a veggie burger. Oh, God, no. They are far from a veggie burger. These fake meat companies are new and small, so they have no economies of scale. And that means everything from R&D to distribution is far more expensive. And don't get me started on the subsidy the meat industry receives to lower the prices. So it seems like you answered your own question, huh? Oh shoot, the rat got a gun! Welcome to D- Okay, that was a one minute TikTok video that transports actual information, right? So we get an explanation why fake meat is more expensive, but it comes in this dialogue fiction-like entertaining way. So something totally different to a normal TV report, okay? So if people are spending a lot of time on TikTok anyhow, they might just stumble over this piece of content and they get some actual information, right? On the other hand, there are quite traditional ways of just doing actual reporting on the platform. Of course, reporting can be done anywhere else, but if your target audience is on the platform, you better be on the platform as well, right? So the next TikTok we will be watching is by Sophia smith Gawler. She has been working for the BBC. Now she's working for Vice, and she's been in Glasgow covering the entire um, climate conference. And um, let's watch one minute of her reporting okay international action on climate so here are all the sponsors of cop 26 and they're all here because they want you to know that they are helping deliver international action on climate change isn't that nice uh, there's some other information i thought that you might also like to know so you can see these everywhere at cop Dettol is the hygiene partner of the whole conference this is their owner racket and what isn't everywhere at the conference is their history with palm oil Reckitt used precisely 134,414 tonnes of palm oil or palm oil products in 2019, according to their own figures. And they've been criticised for not banishing deforestation from their supply chain. A 2020 report found that Unilever's pollution footprint amounts to 70,000 tonnes per year, covering more than 11 football pitches a day. SSE, the energy company, its power station at Peterhead in Scotland was the biggest single polluter in the country in 2019, emitting 1.6 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. Microsoft were also here and their co-founder Bill Gates was found to be one of the world's biggest super emitters because of his private jet usage. So here are all the sponsors of COP26.
Okay, so what have we just seen? We have seen an actual report from a climate conference and this TikTok video has been seen nearly 200,000 times with 44,000 likes and 555 comments. And that is because Sophia is just sending to an audience of 275,000 people and she's gathered more than 7 million likes on TikTok. So we see that we can do some actual reporting on the platform. If you are hesitant to stand in front of the camera and produce a TikTok video, you nevertheless should give the platform a try because as always, you can use this platform to gather information and find new stories. So probably you heard of that tragedy of Travis Scott concert at Astroworld a couple of days ago. There was a huge concert of that rap artist and actually eight people died. And in the audience of that concert, of course, a hell lot of young people with their smartphones phones filming. And these days they're just publishing that stuff to TikTok. So even if you don't want to stand in front of a camera, you might just use that for getting eyewitness reports. Let me show you one. Okay, that's basically it. And whenever something happens these days, people post videos of that event to TikTok. Not everywhere, but as we've seen, audience is growing. And what this audience is um, doing on TikTok as well, they are using the inbuilt functionality of TikTok because you can do so much more than just posting stories. Um, there are features like Duet and Stitch that allow you to remix already existing content. Let me introduce to you the duet feature, and then I show you a journalistic use case, okay? Before we jump into the um, duet feature video, the basic idea behind that is you can take already existing content, and then you can produce content and attach it on the right side, on the left side, on top or uh, underneath, and then people can take your video and attach more stuff as well. A huge chance for creativity and creative output. So I will show you this video of self-proclaimed journalist Marcus Di Paola. What he did on TikTok, he introduced his girlfriend. And to be honest, he did that in a really weird way. And that's not my opinion, but it's the internet's opinion, because people quickly started to add different videos to this one using the duet feature. So before showing you the journalistic example, let's have some entertaining, fun stuff here. Okay, here we go. Happy Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you to my girlfriend, who is amazing. Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because. Okay, I think you get the idea. The original video is remixed. So what does that have to do with journalism? Let's look at a journalistic example because you can use the duet feature for doing interviews, right? So I would ask a question and then just wait for the answer. Continue with the next question, wait for the answer again. And then someone could do at my video, as we will just see here, and um, ready is the interview. And just imagine starting an interview, and then various people can answer your questions, right? That's a pretty powerful tool, and um, you get a first glimpse here. 
I'm starting a new series, Food Questions for Different Countries. Do at this because I want to hear the answers. First country randomly chosen, South Korea. What is your favorite traditional dish? Use the green screen so we can see what it looks like. What is your favorite type of kimchi? And how do you pronounce it properly? What is the biggest misconception that people have about Korean cuisine? That it's all about barbecue. Who are the culinary icons of Korean cuisine? Jung Gwang Soo Nim, who was featured in Chef's Table. What's one traditional dish that you just do not like? And why? Anything with still living animals. What's up and coming in Korean cuisine? Vegan food. Please do at this because I want to know and also let me know what countries I should do next. Okay, I hope you got the idea. And I'm starting a new series. Sorry for that. This guy asked food questions now for all people in South Korea. So everybody in South Korea or who comes from South Korea can answer. And just imagine doing that with various countries, okay? So you just start the ball rolling and then people take over. And this to add feature can not only be used for pure interviews, it can be used for doing more and better journalism by, for instance, debunking fake news or mis and disinformation on the platform. And of course, I will show you another, another example here. So basically, we have a video of a young woman spreading conspiracy theories on TikTok um, about uh, fires in the US, okay? And actually, we have a firefighter here who knows this area that she's talking about, and she's just debunking her theories using another version of the duet feature, okay? So we see the original video um, above, and we see him explaining what he thinks is right and he should know because he is the firefighter uh here we go now there are a lot <sighs> of fires going on right now in our country uh -huh. was it planned here's something no. so crazy that it might be true so if you haven't Probably been not. watching the news the only thing besides corona and the election is fires that they're talking about but is it yeah. not weird to you guys to know that the fires know when to stop at the border because it's mean, a u.s look, database map literally you're looking at zero not going to be reporting board. Canada fires. Look at all the stuff we have. Not to mention, look up Canada though. Zero story is about how any of these other fires started, except for this one that campfires, lightning Just like strikes. Nowadays, this is not very newsworthy. Though. However, I have something to show you that hasn't been debunked or even talked Probably about. Is. And the reason why is because I don't think a lot of people have this. Now, what you're looking at are all half burned trees about 40 miles from Grand Canyon National Park. I screenshot oh, the video so to work you can there. see the half burned trees. But wait, it gets weirder. But if this was just a regular fire, why were there? That's literally not there. The I've including on some worked of the there. Logs that were it down. even and looks edited. This Come on, guys. Take it down very soon. Now, there are a lot <sighs> of fires going on right now in our country. Okay, I hope you get the idea. Uh, interesting enough, this is a firefighter and not a journalist, right? So um, I think we could use some journalistic power here to debunk um, fake news and mis and disinfo on the platform. And there is a lot. And if we had way more time, I could tell you a little bit about fake accounts that I detected right in front of the German federal elections. But I think you definitely got the idea here. Hopefully that TikTok is relevant and that it is already used by journalists and it could be used by even more. So before I hand over to Flourish, let me quickly um, show you that DW has a bunch of TikTok accounts already. There's one called DW Deutsch Lern. It's for learning German. Then DW has one called Berlin Fresh. It's all about Berlin, our vibing capital. And there are two more, DW Arabia and DW News Lagos. And of course, we'll be talking about DW News Lagos. So I will stop sharing and I hand over to you, Flourish, pretty excited about your presentation. Thank you very much, Marcos, um, for your very informative presentation. Um, so basically, I'm just going to be sharing some examples of videos that we've done 
I work with the um, DW News Lagos account to create videos from Lagos and our target audience is um, teenagers, very young people from ages 14 to 17. Those are the people that we try to target with our videos. And um, so most of our videos are created in um, different TikTok-like formats that they can easily digest. Now we know that when many people, when most people come to um, TikTok, they are looking for dance, fun, you know, videos, especially here in Nigeria. So what we are trying to do is to break into that and use that same fun, interesting format to communicate the news. Now we we are actually just experimenting with different types of videos. Sometimes we do fun dance videos, sometimes we do the normal talking to camera, and we're just trying to see which one works, which one our audience likes. So I'm just going to um, show you um, some of our videos. This is one of our most successful videos. Is eating frozen chicken safe? The debate is in the news once again, and it's centered around the safety of a chemical called formalin, which is sometimes used to preserve frozen poultry products. Formalin is approximately 37 to 38% formaldehyde, 10 to 15% methanol, 48 to 53% water, and is used in some foods to help prevent cell decay, which explains its use in frozen food products like chicken. But does that make it safe for people to eat? Especially given that its principal component, formaldehyde, is so toxic. Well, the Food Safety and Health Authority. We have lots of different other videos. Now, I want to show you one. That one was just like the normal, very packed with information video. And a lot of people actually responded because they're talking about frozen chicken, which is something that most Nigerians eat. So I guess also finding the sweet spot between like what is trending and what people really care about um, helps in like selling our videos because TikTok is mostly about trends. So um, what happened was NAVDAC, NAVDAC is the regulatory agency for food and drugs, released a report about frozen chicken and we jumped in and did a video right when the report came out. So a lot of people were interested in knowing if they were eating poisonous food. Now let me show you another video. This one is about Hush Puppy. I don't know if you've heard about Hush Puppy. He's the famous Nigerian... Um, fraud star so he's he's um currently undergoing trial in the u.s he defrauded a lot of people in the in the u.s and in different countries and he was basically flaunting his wealth on social media and lying that he was getting his money from um from real estate so let me just show you the video what goes on Okay, so in that video, we made use of a trending sound. Um, that's something that journalists can also really make use of. Um, the lyrics of the sound is what goes around comes around, which is basically the story of Hush Puppy. And um, we got a lot of feedback from that video as well. So if journalists want to really engage with TikTok, then it's really helpful to use um, trending sounds because Again, like I said before, TikTok really works with trends. Like the more you are aligned with the trends in TikTok, the more your video goes far, the farther your video, videos go. Um, so uh, that is, I think in a nutshell, because we've already seen so many examples from Marcos, in a not, nutshell, what we are doing at DW News Lagos, we started this account um, a few months ago, not up to a year, maybe like seven months ago and we are already almost at 20,000 followers 
um, which is a lot because we started from zero followers and we built it organically. Um, we, we try to make sure that we post every single day. Well, no, not every day, sorry, four days in a week. So Monday to Thursday, and then every, every Monday to Thursday at almost exactly the same time um, so that our followers can know what to expect. And I think it also helps with the algorithm. Um, yeah, other than that, we just basically wanted to experiment and see how far we could go with um, trying to do newsy things on TikTok. And I think so far we've been quite successful. People really know us now and, you know, they can identify the different faces. We are three contributors on TikTok and um, people can, you know, say, oh, this is my favorite person or whatever. And I think that in the coming year, we are also going to grow and expand, possibly hire more people and, you know, try to see how we can talk about things that affect you know, more of Africa, not just focus on Nigeria or the West Africa region. So I'll hand over to Marcos now and um, he'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Flourish. Um, yeah, now you heard a lot from us and I think we're ready to take some questions, right? So yep. ladies and gentlemen. Both of you, uh, I think very insightful stuff uh, in terms of this new media and and, uh, the type of new, uh, you know, untethered territories that we have sometimes uh, unseasoned uh, fears uh, in, 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 you know, getting onto this new territory. So my question to you, Marcos, really is, uh, you know, in, in, in creating that thread between what Zoe was saying, you know, advocating for uh, the use of traditional methods in traditional media spaces, um, how do how do we enable this transition uh, where companies like Deutsche Welle that have been that have been functioning in a very traditional space uh, are now also using the new tools that are available? What what have you unlocked in terms of connecting more with your audiences uh, or, or getting the stories out there uh, in terms of um, having a greater effect and impact? Thanks for that question, Patrick. I think these days it's not a question if we want to, but I think we definitely must because otherwise we're just losing audience, right? Because the behavior and the media usage these days is different compared to 20 or 30 years ago. So if your new target audience, people under 25, they are on this very platform, then we better be on this platform as well. On the other hand, it's a perfect time because all our journalistic skill set is so much needed on this platform, especially when we're talking about mis and disinformation. Okay, so with the, all this learned journalistic skill set, we only need to start doing what we have been doing in a slightly different way, but still journalistic on TikTok. But from an intergenerational perspective, you know, I mean, a lot of, for instance, in our context in Southern Africa, a lot of newsrooms are filled with uh, a little bit more uh, matured or older people uh, as were the edit edit editors in chief. Um, could this be threatening to that generation uh, when there is such a big focus um, in terms of even career uh, opportunities, like uh, who gets the job these days? Must you become more diverse as a news or journalist? Um, you know, like, like in terms of, talk to us about in terms of those things. Absolutely, it definitely is. But it's not just that TikTok came around and made this. We are living in the 21st century. And yes, there have been crucial changes and these are ongoing, right? Apart from that, I don't think it's necessarily an age question because in my work as a trainer and consultant, I um, meet a lot of very young people who are really hesitant using uh, social media platforms at all. On the other hand, I've met a lot of folks who are as old as me or even older, um, who are totally amazed by the new possibilities that this platform um, gives you. So I think it's more like an approach and an attitude and in my understanding, journalists should be the ones who are pretty curious, who want to learn more. So why not learn more about a fantastic new platform? Okay, thank you. Flourish, the next question is to you. Uh, platforms like TikTok almost seem like they take away the seriousness uh, um, of the implications of, of particularly journalism, investigative journalism. Um, 
how do we debunk those myths and move on with, with this tool as a key instrument uh, in connecting to audiences, in telling the truth and in restoring trust? Hmm. Okay, thank you for that very good question. Um, I think that is something that being a journalist on the outside of TikTok may limit you from getting into TikTok because maybe you might feel like you said that maybe I may not be taken seriously or people may not trust me and all of that. But I mean, I don't, I, I think that if you provide people with facts and sources, um, which is something that we try to do when we do our videos. I mean, we've had videos where people will come up and say, I'm a lawyer, you guys are lying. You know, let's say we are talking about something legal, like something related to law. And people would come out and say things and try to, you know, confront us and tell us we are basically not saying the truth, which is something that anyone doing journalism on any social media platform would face. Like there are people that are going to come and com confront what you're saying. And we just had to like, put our documents, our facts, our research out there in the comment section. So we were like interacting with our audiences and showing them that this is something that we fact checked and is 100% reliable. So I guess for journalists, you mustn't like, you must not take it as, oh, this is TikTok. This is just something I can just go and do. You have to still do your job as a journalist and have your facts right because somebody is going to check. <laughs> and once you, once you lose their trust the first time, you know, you've already lost your credibility. So it's going to be difficult to get it back, you know. So I think you just have to put the information out there, worry less about whether, because people are sharing fake news and they are getting people to believe them, you know, how much more you that is sharing the truth. So just put it out there, standing on your own, you know, authority as a journalist and let people know that you know your job, you know what you're doing. And um, I think, yeah, I think that's just the way to go about it. Uh, thank you very much. I think we are running out of time. So in my conclusion remark, I, I think in the spirit of telling the truth, uh, especially to Marcus as well, uh, you know, you guys can both answer the question. There's this big issue around digital colonialization. Uh, you know, when people talk about issues uh, around if Uber is used here, if TikTok is used here, you know, somebody sitting somewhere else is benefiting monetarily. So uh, in looking at obviously the economics as well as the technology intersection, but, but, but looking at how it affects, um, you know, the either proliferation of the continued use of foreign digital platforms to keep on telling our stories, or do we then advocate for particularly in Southern Africa and for the future of journalism, whether it's in West Africa as well, um, the creation of our own platforms, similarly to the fact that we need to own our own media outlets and not just have foreign news outlets uh, become the tools that we use. So uh, at that clash, uh, what do we advocate for? Absolutely, 100%. Only problem is in the last 30 years, um, I have not seen a single platform, let's generalize and say people for the people that has um, risen up and stayed there. Okay. So I totally agree. And it's uh, a misery that we as journalists in the year 2021 have to rely on private platforms that are run by corporations and who want to earn money that we have to use these to reach a target audience. But what are we supposed to be doing if less and less people go to our websites? Okay. So the critique still uh, remains for Flourish. What's your input? Um, well, for me, I would say, I think I understood your question more from an African perspective, like Africans creating their own platforms. Yeah, it's important that we create our own platforms and we advocate for creating our own platforms. But unfortunately, we really don't have the resources to create at that scale at the scale of say a Facebook from Africa or a TikTok from Africa. And it, it is what it is, you know, like Marcos said, if we don't have the 
right tools to create our own platforms, then we just have to make use of what is already there. I mean, it's a sad situation and it really shouldn't be, but what do we do? It's, it, I think it's tied to lots of different issues. Should we talk about our government not doing the right thing, you know, to make sure that we have the right infrastructure and the right tools for us? Because we have really smart people here that can do the same thing, but do they have the resources? So I don't think it's just mainly going to be about advocating for us to create our own platforms. But even when we advocate for it, do we have the resources to do that? You know. A quick question from Stephanie Dirksteiner from Deutsche Welle as well that says, could you elaborate how your target group responds to your news content? Did you create a debate? How is the responsiveness? Okay, so one thing that we do with TikTok is at the end of every video, we ask our, our audiences, our target group to comment. So we say, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. We always end with a question. And um, people are always quick to, um, excuse me, people are very quick to respond. And um, especially because on TikTok, you can reply a comment with a video. So if someone suggests like, oh, thank you guys for this video. Could you make a video about this? We don't just neglect that. Um, comments we actually take it and make a video about it if we you know if we have the time so by engaging with our audience we are seeing more and more people wanting to comment wanting to say something and we also reply practically every comment so everyone who posts a video has a responsibility to go in and reply every comment and once people see that you are replying their comments you're engaging with them then they want to engage more they feel like you are hearing them so, yeah. Interesting point there in terms of the bi-directional nature, in terms of communication uh, that's needed for, you know, these online and digital tools. And that I think traditionally when you're on television, we're very much used to a, a one line and one direction uh, as journalists. But I think in terms of also the accountability aspect that we speak about, both within the fraternity and outside in terms of how we engage, I think it heightens that sense of accountability, both within mm -hmm. the fraternity and within the media houses, but also in, in terms of the engagement that takes place between the audience as well. So uh, it is a lot to take on uh, and in terms of the culture, and but I think it's a very important point that you make uh, and that it changes the, 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 the actual pedagogy uh, of engagement and how we do uh, uh, discuss our stories. So thank you very much for that. I think the presenters have been great. Uh, so far, in terms of, I think, making the principal point that there is a need for new tools, there's a need for new paradigms, there's a need to have the right resources, the capacity, the infrastructure to, in, to ensure uh, inclusion uh, as journalists continue uh, learning these skills, but also more importantly, in applying them uh, to reach their audiences. Again, uh, from the audiences, a round of applause, flicking your fingers, I don't know, open up your mute, ululate, uh, do something to let the people know that they are uh, appreciated indeed. Siveza ikiniso, sivuselela ukutembega.